Hello everybody, it's Chaz in Omaha, and today we're going to do some Season 2 predictions. I had a lot of fun doing this last time, even though I was like wildly wrong, but I'm going to do it again because it's really fun to speculate. Um, so this first list here is basically how many kills per spec will the specs be in for the first kill during Race to World first, right? So only the first kill... Um, I have to do some surgery on logs afterwards, but Wowhead tends to make it pretty easy to figure out, so we'll just look on that website. All right, so we're just gonna go in order of this thing. It doesn't look like this one's missing specs like last time, <laughs> or I had to patch them in at the end. So we'll just go in order here. Affliction Warlock. It's kind of looking like Affliction Warlock's not gonna be a thing, this tier. Maybe, maybe they'll do some changes last minute, like they did already. And they'll be amazing on like, you know, single target at the end or something because of movement, who knows, but I'm going to go with zero. Arcane Mage. I think they're also going to be zero. It's kind of looking like fire is going to be the play, and that's just kind of what I'm going to stick with. I could be wrong. I know I was really wrong on Arcane Mage last time because they were slept on, but pretty much everybody slept on Arcane Mage last time, so what are you going to do? Let's see Arms Warriors. Now, I think... I think that Arms Warriors is going to be in one or two. Because I think what always happens, like what happened with Razageth, is that they bring in Arms Warriors when there's like a really difficult execute phase, right? And like the Arms Warrior does trash DPS through most of the fight compared to the rest of the raid, but then if you look at their DPS for the last 30% or so, they kind of crush everyone. I think they're going to be in one or two fights for that very reason. I would say, if I had to guess which one, probably that three-headed Hydra guy where the room closes in on you. I think that's going to be the Sludge Fist, right? So, let's see. So, I guess this is Assassination Rogue. It's kind of a weird icon, yeah. This is Assassination. Now, this is hard for me. Because I have this gut feeling that Assassination might actually be meta this time. Just because most of the raid is almost pure single target, right? I'm going to go crazy. Let's see. So, the, the Assault one, you're never going to play Assassination on the Assault one. But other than that, I'm, I'm actually going to do something crazy. I think I'm going to say 7 to 8. This is probably going to bite me afterwards, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a wild prediction like I did with Enhancement Shaman last time, although I was right with Enhancement. So we're going to go for that, and we'll see how it goes. Let's see, Boomkin. I would think that Boomkin would be good at least on, like, Amalgamation Chamber, certainly Zakali Assault. Um... I don't think that there's really any benefit to having things like Root and Druid CC. I don't know how good Innervate's going to be this time. Their single target seems kind of bad. I think I'm going to say 1 to 2. I don't think that they're very good right now. This might also bite me in the butt, right? Because they might just have like some utility thing I'm not aware of that they're really important on a bunch of fights, but I don't think they will be. Let's see, BM Hunter. Is it going to be BM or Marksman this time? I haven't been following Hunters closely enough to speculate on this. Dang, man. This is a hard one. I could see there being some fights. I'm trying to think of what... I think maybe like on the last fight? Maybe I'm going to put him with the Boomkin. I have a feeling that they're going to be some, some bitch job, right, for BM, like there almost always is. Like, you know, Diurna-style bitch job with a staff or something. And we haven't seen the last boss. But that's the only kind of one I can think of. Yeah, I think that's good. Alright, we got blood. Now, I'm pretty torn on the tanks here. I don't know which tank is going to be meta, just because, like... I know that Paladin is kind of like the meta tank, but the problem is with raids is you have to think about what kind of buffs they provide and what kind of buffs other things provide and how good the other things are that provide those buffs, right? I kind of feel like a lot of raids might use Brewmasters right now because melees seem kind of like a liability, so bringing a Mistweaver for a healer probably doesn't seem good. And also, Windwalker single target right now is kind of in the dumpster even after the buffs, right? So you're probably going to want to get the Monk buff from the Monk. And then Paladins seem kind of disgusting right now. I'm actually going to go crazy, and I'm going to say zero for blood. This is probably going to be super wrong, but I'm going to do this because I'm crazy. And then I'm going to say Brewmaster. I think Brewmaster is going to be the monk buff. 
I think that's gonna. I think that's how it's gonna have to be because of the way the raid is and the and the state of Windwalker right now. We'll see. I'll probably lose a lot of points for this. <laughs> demo lock. All right. So I think demo is gonna be in a majority of the kills, with some of the fights going leaning towards Destro instead, like the experiments and the amalgamation chamber particularly. I think for the Zakali Assault, you could probably play Demo or Destro, and it probably wouldn't really matter that much. So, yeah. So that's the being said with Destro. I think this one's going to be 3 to 4. No, not 3 to 4. Let's see, how would this work out? 6, 3 to 4, 5 to 6. Yeah, I think this is good. Wait, is there 3? Yeah, so if they were to do Assault, Amalgamation, and Experiments, that would be three. Yeah, this looks good. This looks good. It'll probably be three and six, is my guess. All right, Devastation Evoker. I think they're going to be... I think you're going to have one in most, pl in most uh, encounters. I'm not entirely sure why. Their DPS was pretty good compared to Warlock's. But their defensive kit kind of sucks compared to Warlocks, but they are more mobile, so there might be some reason why you'd want one. But you're not really going to need their buff, because I'm pretty sure you're going to have a Preservation Evoker in each in, in every kill. Let's just go ahead and put that here. I think that's going to be in every kill. Let's do with the healers. Resto Shaman. Resto Shaman seems like it's a lock-in for every kill because of the way the fights are designed this time, and that Resto is so much stronger now than it was. <laughs> And then we're gonna also do the Holy Paladin thing. I think these are I think these three are gonna be in, in like every kill. Um So Devastation Evoker. Am I really thinking seven to eight? Yeah. I think they're just gonna shoehorn it in there. And I'm not really sure why. This is just a feeling I get. There might be one fight where like their range thing becomes a huge problem. But maybe not. I'm like thinking through them. Their range issue could be a problem on the Hydra guy with the fire everywhere. And their range could be a problem on the dude with the fire traps everywhere, right? But every other fight, I think it's fine. So yeah, seven's probably fine. Disc Priest. I don't think that Disc Priest is going to see much play this time. I think that Preservation Evoker has kind of like superseded what Disc used to do. But I think there might be some edge case where they feel disc is better, so I think I'm going to say 1 to 2 here. Although, if that's true, yeah, that means that the last healer probably won't be 9, right? That's fine. We're going to go with that. Elemental Shaman. Dude, I think that they could be really good on the uh, Zakali Assault, but their single target still seems kind of bad. And then their AoE got nerfed because they nerfed the set, but their AoE is still pretty good. I don't know, I just don't think they're going to use Elemental Shaman. I think they need to give Elemental Shaman uh, Wrath of Air Totem like to be the counterpart to Wind Fury Totem, and then Elemental will be a lock for raids, right? Then everybody that wants to play Elemental can just play it and not be worried about it. I think that's what they need to do. That'd be great. Enhancement. Are they going to be for every kill, guys? I think they will. I'm not as sure this time. But I think that they're still just going to be in for every kill. I think you're going to have enhancement for every kill just for the melee group thing. The Wind Fury Totem is so crazy. You could probably just put Elemental up here if they were to put Arath the Air back in the game, right? As a counterpart to Wind Fury. Here's hoping, right? Feral Druid. I don't really know about this. I don't know how good they are right now. But they might have like crazy single target, right? But then they'd have to, they'd have to be melee. So they probably won't be in... They probably won't see like any play in the last two bosses because I don't think those are... Probably going to be too terribly melee friendly, but maybe they'll be like ridiculously good for like beating the Enrage on Ziskarn and the Hydra guy. But then they're still melee. Nah, I don't think there's going to be a Feral. Fire, all right. I think Fire. Every kill, maybe? Because I think this is going to be the mage spec. I think you're just going to be fire for every encounter. Because like their AoE and single target is like the same, right? And they're just really good. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're crazy, man. We're going to put these two mages at zero. And I think I'm just going to go all fire. I feel like I'm probably going to be one off or something here. I'll probably be only one fight off or all the fights off. And Arcane will be amazing again for whatever reason. Frost DK. 
like I this is like this is kind of like the elemental shaman, right? I feel like they'd be really good on Zakali Assault, but I feel like why bring one? Why bring one, right? Cuz like that fight's not going to be that hard. So I think they're just going to like use, you know, they're just going to use like warlocks for massive AoE. Maybe they'll bring in the sub rogue instead of assassination for that one, probably, right? It'll probably be sub rogue for make good melee AoE, fury warriors. All right, so we got arms at one to two, and I think you still want warrior, and I think that fury seems good enough right now where you just don't use a warrior tank, right? And you instead you use the monk and the um and the prop paladin. So I think fury is gonna be in seven or eight, and then arms is the other one. I think you're gonna have one DPS warrior in every kill. Let's see, guardian. Go ahead and put that in zero. That doesn't that doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. All right, this is havoc. I think. I think this is going to be one of your lock-in melee slots, right? I mean, it's either this or you have a vengeance, right? Because casters are really casters seem like they're going to be really strong this tier, so it's either vengeance or havoc. And since I'm not assuming you'll have a vengeance tank, I think you'll use a monk tank because of Windwalker and havoc seems better than Windwalker right now for single target. So I think havoc's a lock for all bosses. We'll see. Holy priest. I think that the holy priest could probably be like a a fifth healer on some fights like disc so i think maybe i'll give holy priest one to two i think these two guys could be like you know fourth or fifth healer edition for throughput or certain types of burst for disc i think marksman is probably going to be here with demo i think you'll probably use marksman actually maybe not i'm kind of thinking there might be a lot of fights where you don't use hunters there's not like a lot of like bits jobs that I can think of. I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy and I'm gonna say that there's gonna be some kills with no hunters. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do, guys. All right, Mistweaver. I don't think they're gonna use a melee healer other than Paladin, which is unfortunate. I really like to see Mistweavers like become meta again because like the way they play is really cool. I'm almost motivated to level one just to heal as a Mistweaver because it looks fun. See Outlaw. I feel like the Fodum of Outlaw has faded. If you're going to do AoE, it kind of seems like sub. If you want pure single, it kind of seems like your assassination. Um, I can't really think of a particular reason. I suppose on a two target, yeah, that's I'm going to put Outlaw for two, for one. I think that you might use Outlaw over sub or assassination on the experiments fight. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I think this might I might lose. This might be zero. Cause assassination is pretty good on two targets too, right? Ah, oh, never mind. Let's just say I think that's gonna be sub and assassination. I don't think Outlaw is gonna be in there for a race of world first meta, anyways. Prot Warrior. I just don't think they're gonna use Prot Warrior now. I think they're gonna use I think they're gonna use Prot Paladin and Monk. I think that's gonna be the combo. I could be wrong with this. This is like a gamble, right? Because if Monk isn't providing their physical debuff, or if they just decide they don't give a shit about the physical debuff because they don't have very many melee in, then they could end up using like Paladin Warrior or Paladin DK, and then I'm going to be all wrong. But I'm going to go crazy here too and say zero for Pro Warrior. We'll see how close that... We'll see if this prediction is correct at all. I think I have a good chance of them using Monk for physical debuff if they bother to use a physical debuff. They might, They might just not do it. Uh, Resto Druid. Could Resto Druid be a fifth healer too? So you have Holy Paladin, Preservation, Resto Shaman. And then you could probably have a Holy Priest, but a Resto Druid kind of can also do what a Holy Priest does. But it sort of depends on if it's rot damage or like burst damage. I would think that for rot damage, a Druid would really shine. And then burst damage, this would be better and this would be better. Hmm. I have to think about that one. So Rhett, I almost want to put Rhett at 9, but like the melee thing keeps me from saying every single fight. But I mean, if they're not, who is? So what's your melee group? You're going to have Enhancement, you're going to have one of the Warriors, you're going to have a Rogue or two, and a Havoc. So if you only had one Rogue for a Trophic, Enhancement, a Warrior, a Havoc, and then you could have a Rhett, and Rhett's really strong right now. Are, is their utility worth anything in the raid? Hmm. I'm going to stick with 7 to 8. There might just be some place where, like, maybe they bring, like, three arms warriors or something, and then there's no Rhett Paladin. 
that could happen. That could happen, right? Honestly, with the execute too, if you're if assassination rogue, if my prediction with assassination is right, maybe they don't even use arms warriors and they just stick with the assassinations and they just go the execute spec, right? I don't even know if that's like something that would happen, but maybe it would. We're gonna go with that. That's fine. Shadow. I think you might have a shadow priest in every single kill. No, there's single turret. No, never mind. Let's put them like let's put them like with the hunter. Or are they not gonna be in the fight at all? They they it, it seems like they're either gonna be in every fight or none, right? I know they're really meta in Mythic Plus right now, but I still thought that their single target like wasn't really that good. But they do oh they do have PI though. And demo no, they're gonna be in every kill. I think they're gonna bring like maybe one or two Shadow Priests if their single target is acceptable because of this. Because the demo set becomes insane with PI, right? And if you don't have priest healers, then a shadow priest is a good solution to that. And the VE, maybe you can use it for certain fights. This this seems silly, but I'm gonna do this. I might be totally wrong. They might just be not be used. Then demo will be sad, right? Then demo will be sad. Sub. All right. I think sub is gonna be the Zakali assault spec for the AOE. And I think assassination is gonna just be every other fight. That's one. That's a uh, even the even the two target fifty percent of the time fight, I think I think assassination would beat sub in that scenario, even though it's kind of more, it's kind of more of a pain in the ass to place assassination in that scenario, right? But it, I think to two targets it'd be better. Uh, we we'll go ahead and put survival down there in the dumpster. Unholy DK. Let's see, vengeance. I don't think it's going to be there. Windwalker. I'm predicting Windwalker is superseded by the tank, and then resto. I think I'm just going to put them one for two. Maybe they're a fifth healer, right? Maybe you've tossed like both of these in for like healing dynamics for the the fifth, fourth and fifth healer, right? You could honestly double resto shaman for a lot of fights, which is which is something I see might I think might happen. Like when you need to, need to add more healers, I think a lot of them just double resto shamaning it would be really really good. So these might not see this might be bad having all of these in the 1 to 2. Yeah, I think I'm going to put Resto Druid in zero. I think they're going to use Holy Priest over Resto Druid if they need, like, more throughput. Now, we're going to go with our... Wait, how many is this? So let's see. If these are in for every fight, then the fourth healer is one of these. Right? The fourth healer is one of these or another Shaman. It's... Yeah, I think we'll leave it like this. We're going to hedge. This is probably wrong, but I just don't know which one. I don't know which one is gonna fill the niche that is needed, right? And then unholy DK. Mm. No DKs. Which fight is there? Any fight where grip is gonna be like a thing where like you split your raid and you're gonna need grips? The one with the traps. I'm gonna put unholy DK in one for the guy with the traps and the ads. I think death grip might be a thing there. And then you use an Aholi for that particular fight, just for just so you have death grips. That might actually be a fight where they end up using a blood and like a win swapping a windwalker in for the monk and using blood and paladin or something too. But I'm not gonna change it now. Alright, this is my prediction for how many kills each spec will be in for the first kill during race to roll first. Okay, this next list is less of a tier list i'm just using the tier list maker because it's convenient i'm going to guess how many pulls the race to world first first kill takes before it kills the boss so you can see i put every single boss in a line here with just color coding so it's easy to see the difference and we're just going to put a number here we're just going to put a number here and i kind of put them in order ish since like the order in here is kind of you get to choose, right? So the first boss, I honestly think they're gonna one punch it. I think they're gonna one tap the first boss like they did with Eggnog. It seems easy, right? You just kite lasers around, heal your raid, don't stand in fire. I don't think there's gonna be any gotchas. I think they're doing that on purpose now, right? And so if you're a race to roll first skilled that has like nearly full heroic, upgraded with dragon crests, you're gonna be super over geared for this fight. And I think they're just gonna obliterate it. So I'm gonna go with a one on this. All right, so we got Amalgamation Chamber. I think this one's gonna probably take like three. 
because I think what's going to happen is like the first poll, they're going to find some sort of gotcha with the um, that debuff from other sides, and maybe like range won't be able to stand in the middle anymore, so we'll have to adjust real quick. And then they'll probably get to phase two on the second pull. And some sort of weird mechanic will, like, positioning or something will kill them. And then they'll pull it the third time and kill it. That's what I think is going to happen on this one. Okay, now Forgotten Experiments. Now, this, this fight seemed like there was kind of, like, nothing happening during the raid testing uh, that I watched for various people until the third person. Then, the, then like, all hell broke loose, right? So I think that maybe... Like, you're going to crush the beginning of the fight because nothing's really happening. But then I think that maybe the tuning might be really tight at the end and they'll have to, like, kind of optimize positioning a few times or something. So I'm going to go with five on Forgotten Experiments. Zakali Assault. Um, I could see them one-tapping this, but I think I'm going to hedge and say two. I think they're going to pull it once. And maybe there'll be some gotcha with like the rocks being thrown at the wrong time or like, you know, and they don't or they don't throw the rocks because they kind of think it's going to be easy. Or maybe one of the shamans, like maybe they need to rebalance their raid and one of those bubbles kills one side and then they fix it and then they kill it. I think that's what's going to happen here. All right, Rashok. Now this fight, dude, this fight I'm most excited about. I love the graphic for the lava bubbles. They look super fucking cool. And this whole raid, this whole fight looks so fun. It doesn't look annoying either. It looks intense for both healers and DPS and tanks. But like not unfun, right? Um, it seems like it's going to be a really tight enrage timer. And we're starting to get more into like the end of a, a wing. But I still think that this isn't like far enough in to be like the really big DPS checks. So I think I'm going to go with like 10. Yeah, I'm going to go with like mm, I'm going to go with like 12 on Rush Shock. That sounds good. Now, is this Garn? Now, this is starting to get into like what Anduin ish position, but it's obviously not going to be that hard cuz I don't think they're going to do that to us again. I don't think they're going to put a boss in this ish position that's like Anduin ever again cuz that was too much. Um this one is kind of kind of like like Kurog or Dathia-ish, right? Yeah, pretty much. So this is probably going to take a little longer, and I think the trap mechanics and like coordinating all the ad pulls and like where to go and stuff is going to start getting a lot more complicated here. So I could see this one probably taking upwards of like 30. I think this is when it's going to start taking a long time because there's a lot of shit going on. And it seems like there's a lot of mechanics that like can one-tap multiple people like constantly, right? And then, of course, maybe they'll find, like, that all of a sudden, oh, we do need Death Knights to pull, pull Thads in, or, oh, maybe we just need to use a Blood DK for Mass Grip, so now we got to swap out a Monk, blah, blah, blah. I think some stuff like that's going to start happening here. So, this Magmarax, now this is Sledge Fist, right? So, this is, this is another fight I'm really excited about. This is when it's going to start taking a lot of pulls, right? Unless the tuning sucks. But we saw, like, on testing, the tuning was... The tuning was brutal on this fight. I don't think any of the people that were testing it got below 50%. Not that I was like there or anything, but from what I saw, it looked like they were nowhere close to winning. So I think they're probably gonna have to nerf this fight before they can beat it. So I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna go like 55 because I think they're gonna smash their heads against it for like a day or something or half a day. And then Blizzard might just have to like step in and maybe like decrease the puddle expansion rate or some shit like that. I don't know, we'll see. Echo of Natharian. Now, this one's pretty cool. The Phase 2, it seems like they kind of got it down. Um, I don't know if they're going to change those bombs into, like, insta one-shot if they hit other people, because I saw that sometimes, like, the walls kind of are, like, like this shape. And if a person's standing, like, here and here, right, and the walls around them, they hit each other but not the raid, and they might kill each other. I was thinking that that's probably something that would happen on Mythic, but it didn't seem to happen on the testing. So if it stays with the testing uh, way then that makes this a lot simpler. If it doesn't, then I think that that means that like you're going to have to coordinate the wall breaks so that there are three distinct sections. Like Say the wall is like this, right? You're going to have to have somebody break here, here, and here, and hopefully there's walls between to, to save all three of those people, right? So I think that might happen. And then we don't really know what's happening on phase two, and it's the penultimate boss, right? So I think this one's probably going to be 
This one's probably going to be, I don't know, maybe like, maybe like 85. Yeah. And now Sarkareth, I mean, honestly, I'm just going to say 200. Because like, with, with what we saw from Razageth, right, it seems like they're making, you know, the difficulty curve rather consistent. Um, and if this is even close to Razageth, Hopefully they do it backwards though, right? And the first phase isn't the hardest phase. So yeah, this is my prediction for the number of pulls for the first kill on Racer World First guilds. Okay guys, this is the last prediction that I thought of. And this, I did this last time too, and this is a lot of fun. And I think I was actually kind of close, but not on the healers. I think the healers was the one I was super wrong on. Anyways. This is going to be the raid composition for the first group to kill the last boss during World, Race to World First. So the first kill of Sarkareth, this is going to be my guess for the comp. This is like total crazy guesswork, right? I, I have no idea how to do this, but we're just going to wing it, right? So we'll start with tanks, right? I still think it's going to be Prop Paladin, and I think it's going to be Monk. I think this is going to be the combo. We're just going to stick with it, and I think that's going to happen. Um, so let's do our melee group. I'm still thinking that you're going to have an Enhancement Shaman for every kill, because they make melee a lot better. Where the heck is the Enhancement Shaman? There he is. We make our Enhancement Shaman. I think we're going to have two Assassination Rogues. I think that... Um... Now, this is, this is actually a hard decision. I don't know sub versus assassination. It just sort of depends on like the value of execute. It depends on the value of add damage. If it's like Razageth, then you'll probably go back to sub for the same reasons you did it on that one. If there's burst phases, uh, lots of burst phases, sub is better. If there's only like one big burst phase, then assassination could be better with exsanguinate. I don't know. I'm going to lean into this. I'm going to lean into this thinking assassination is going to be good this tier because maybe they'll just make it like not as much aoe right like maybe it'll be like phases with big ads instead of like a whole bunch of little ads like razageth had a bunch of times so we're gonna go with that i think that there's a strong possibility for um the execute phase to have the arms warrior here and then where's my havoc guy there's my havoc guy this is like the melee group right now i think that um the last boss I'm still gonna lean into this that the single target is more important. So I'm honestly gonna put three demo locks in here. I think that this is gonna be a thing. I think it's gonna be a recurring theme that we see. I think we're gonna have one devastation because there's probably gonna be something about them that makes you want them. I don't know. So let's put my healer comp in here. We put preservation. Um where's the there's the holy paladin. Boop, 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 boop. Oh yeah, where's the shaman? Here we go, we got the rest of shaman. Now I think this fight is probably gonna have two rest of shaman. I think that they're probably gonna continue with the stacking being good. And if it's anything like Razageth, there's gonna be a whole crap ton of places where spirit link and stacking for chain heal and shit's gonna be amazing, right? So hopefully this, hopefully this is uh, somewhat accurate. Now there's some hard questions here. How anti-melee is this fight? Uh, let's go ahead and put go ahead and put two fire mages in, and then um, maybe we maybe we maybe there's some I could see there being something where a a, a druid is like good for like. Yeah, that sounds good. I think I could see like a druid doing something, just like the roots on Razageth, right? I could see this being one of the fights where they're like, oh, we need a balanced druid. Actually, let's put two of these in here. I think there might be two balanced druids for this fight for the same reason, right? I think that there might be some, you need roars, you need, um, you know, roots, you need cyclone, you need solar beam, you know, a bunch of utility crap, and it's just worth it to sacrifice some single target. And then I think I'm also gonna assume it's a, I think I'm assume it's a five heal, a five heal. I think I'm gonna assume it's a five, a five heal. So the question becomes, um, 
I think Holy Priest for like throughput. Um, after I watched back through my video, I realized I kind of left out things that I thought would be in like every kill, which made meant I put a Ret Paladin in the melee group and added a Shadow Priest in place of one of the demos. Because I think you want two priests, one for each demo. So here's my n updated version of the raid comp for the Sarkrath kill. Hmm. <laughs>